It's my birthday. Hi, welcome back to West Coast Geeks, the birthday show. Today's video topics are going to be the current state of Greek culture. And you know who's with me? Hey, guys, it's Eric. My boy, Eric. So for those of you who have not seen Thor Ragnarok, there is a funny scene when um, uh, Bruce is on this ship and they're trying to escape this world. And he, and uh, he's being pursued, and he goes, what does this button do? And all of a sudden, all these fireworks explode, and you just hear this woman, <laughs> like, singing, it's my birthday. So every time I see this image, I started laughing, because, you know, <laughs> that, that part of the movie was funny. The great and Jeff was, Goldblum. Yeah, and I was thinking of, a, you know, to have a nice little screen opening for our video, or for birthday video. All right, so we're going to be talking about some topics. Glad my boy Eric could be here. Hmm. So here we go. Ooh, yeah. First topic. Will you see the D&D movie, Honor Among Thieves? The movie is, good, is a good D&D movie. The moviegoers and critics enjoyed the film. Look at, look at, look at. Check the uh, Rotten Tomato scores and everything. And do you think they will attempt another movie in five years? So, Eric, have you have you gone and seen the movie yet? I have not. Will you? I'm I'm leaning towards it. It's it's funny. Like before all this OGL and Wizards of the Coast and D and D shit happened, I would have been running out to go see it. Now, I want to see it, but. I've had things come up, and I just, I'm kind of like, I'll go see it, and I would like to see it in the theater. So I, I probably will see it in the theaters via my special entrance method. <laughs> You're still not going to pay for it. <laughs> no, I'm not going to pay for it. I'm going to go gonna... fucking pay for some, I don't know what, I, see, that's another thing. I never go to the movies, so I don't even know what's out. I just got to find a movie that's around the same time. Yeah. And sneak in there, because fuck Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro, I ain't giving them a moment of money. Yeah. So a lot of people but feel yeah. like that, and um, yeah, it makes me sad though because I does. was really when they first announced it, and that first trailer was like, "Oh shit, a displacer beast! Oh shit, they just jumped in the giant cube!" Yep, they got Ember Chad, the fucking fat dragon. I yeah, like, no, I was hyped too, and I was just like, "Just don't suck." That's all yeah. I asked for. I was like, "Please, just don't suck," and it didn't. It's actually a cool. Uh, I've heard it's a action good little action movie. You know, I I stay away from spoilers. I haven't even watched any trailers since then because you know, after the movie's been out for a while, they add new footage. Yeah. So I haven't watched any of that. I like going to the movie, just you know. Oh, they stopped relaxing. doing all that. That promotion for this movie is dead now. Yeah. But no, it's but, a good uh, movie. I'm like, um, people like for those of you who who watch a lot a lot a lot of YouTube and are familiar with the critical drinker that guy is fucking hilarious is he, he even did a review on this and he goes you know i went in there thinking that this was gonna be crap and he goes i was surprised it was you know he goes it was an entertaining movie you know hmm. it, it's no okay. lord of the rings but it's oh, no yeah. D movie either you know well, it, and, uh, just even from the trailer you can kind of see that they tried to put that marvel method of of humor into it that's really been successful but they didn't they didn't uh overdo it like marvel has been doing lately yeah. like when you have some serious scenes they stay serious uh-huh you know it's not like somebody's crying like my father died and a dwarf cuts a fart or something like what the <laughs> hell man <laughs> Which is what would happen <laughs> yeah you're like this is stupid who writes this crap so <laughs> Yeah, the uh, the D and D movie, like I said, I I saw it opening weekend. I didn't see it Friday okay. night, but I saw it Saturday. And um... I was actually planning, like, and then like I said, I didn't run out when it opened. But that first week, because you know I'm off Sunday Mondays, and I was yeah. like, well, maybe I'll go see. It. And Dallas, you know, she keeps, like, hey, you want to go see the movie? You want to go see the movie? I'm like, yeah, but then you know, like I said, I got doctor's appointments, I got work, yeah, got all this other shit going on, and I'm just like, yeah, I don't feel like going tonight. I'm I'm gonna try. I'm going to try maybe Sunday because we have our game Monday night. Yeah. Or maybe I'll go maybe Monday during the day and catch a matinee or something. But I'll try and see it this weekend. Like I said, I just, I keep, I keep trying to see it and, you know, got to find a 
good uh, movie to substitute my financial support for. <laughs> yeah, I even bought the D&D Funko Pop uh, Doric. Okay, Dallas did travel to like four different movie theaters and got me that D20 popcorn bucket, though. Oh, nice. That shit is dope. That is cool. Hashtag best wife ever. Yep, hashtag best wife ever. <laughs> So, so yeah, I, I I do I do want to see it, and I would like to see it in the theaters. But you know, like I said, it just stuff has been getting in the way. Yeah, I'm hoping it gets close to breaking even, because yeah, um, I've heard that it's had a bit of an issue with that. Yeah, I I if we can get it, if they can get close to breaking even, then they'll probably most likely think about maybe doing a second uh, one. Um, I don't think they would if it didn't blow up. Opening weekend, they seriously won't do it. Yeah, it was one of those where it, you know they it did a lot better than they thought it was going to be, and mm-hmm. Driz was supposed to be in it, and That's they substituted him with a paladin, and the reason why they're like, well, we don't want to include that because you know the drow, and I'm like, most yep. non D and D player D and D moviegoers are not going to even know who Driz is, and if he just says his name is Driz, like. Whatever his last name is. Um, Gordon. Yeah, if he just says that, that's going to mean nothing to them. So why would you, they're like, well, because the drows are, are slave slave owners. And I go, a lot of D&D culture, fantasy culture is back in the have day. Slave, uh, slavers and shit. Look yeah. at fucking Game of Thrones. Look at how shit, they, you know, they, they had Littlefinger who was running whorehouses. <laughs> that's not so much slaves, but... A different kind oh. of slavery, but right. um, the sex trade. But you had the Greyjoys; they were they were slavers. Um, mm-hmm. And then you, think you the, know, the Lannisters didn't have slaves. Yeah. Then you went all, and oh, then those, yeah, you know the whole what was it? I can't even think of the other uh, little cities that Daenerys they were conquered. Literally all murders, young Kai, and yeah, and, young Kai, yeah. and all them. I was like, it's not mm-hmm. like movie moviegoers would be like, oh, I'm not going to watch something fantasy because it has slave conference, slave yeah. content in it. Which, like you said, unless you're an old school D and D'er, you're not going to know the yeah, history. You're of not going to know who the Drow are, and, not, yeah, and you're not going to really even care. Bullshit, man, God forbid you do anything that's, oh no, they're going to they're going to cancel us. Yeah, it's like that's <laughs> stupid. But anyway, so now you know our views on. D and D and having slave slavery in the content. And let me give you before we leave real quick. I know I'm on my soapbox, but it's my birthday. Um, <laughs> they're saying that's the reason why they do Dark Sun. And I was like, okay, fine. But you can redo Dark Sun without having slavery. All it is is just a king ruling over this people, and those people have to do what he says. So he's just a dictator. I don't see that many people. Like, I would not be the one advocating being like, you know, the original D&D said they had slaves in there and that they were slavers. And that, god damn it, <laughs> that's the way it should be. Right. You know what's gonna, no evil. Yeah, no one's going to do that. Well, there will be, but the majority of people are not going to care. It's like, oh. Uh, like, even in current D&D, sensitive. even if you no, mention it's... that certain groups have slaves, what do you? What's what's the adventuring party most likely do? They go out and they rescue them and they kill the slavers. They become the Khaleesi, bitch. Yeah, breaker of chains, mother effers. Right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, moving on. I got off my soapbox. I'll probably get back. I should just stay on it. Just stay on it. All right. Will Pathfinder Two be able to maintain their new followers? Right now, people are pissed off at Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast. But for how long? Is Pathfinder right for you, or you play other RPGs? And as a D&D viewer, will you still watch D&D content? Well, I you, throw that you, out you, there, because, you know... Okay. It'll be like... I think... You know, I, I right, do... So... Go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. No, I think right now... Okay, you look at the state of D&D. D&D is on the ass end of 5th edition. Unless... Wizards of the Coast comes out with something hugely popular and crazy and really good for 6th edition, 
I don't see anybody, any reason for people to leave the current systems that they're going to. I think Pathfinder is going to keep with the people that they've gone to. I think the new system that they're creating is going to draw a lot of people in. And I don't see Wizards of the Coast garnering enough support from the customer base to pull those people away. They, they, I think they have damaged their name too far now. Yeah. That as long as Wizards of the Coast is is somehow still tied to D and D, I think people that have moved on will stay moved on. I think so too. I think it'd be more important, like if Hasbro, as long as Hasbro owns, like if they were another person were to come and buy it, and then they could see what the new regime is, you know, maybe. Mm-hmm. But um, and even then, I think people are going to look to that and a lot more skeptical way yeah. now because of what Wizards of the Coast did. So um, I've been watching a lot of YouTube uh, D&D content. Some have just said that they are now switching over to Pathfinder, but I was like, we'll see how long that lasts. And mm-hmm. um, others, like the Dungeon Dudes, they're going to just add it to their content which is like the majority of YouTubers are going to do. Um, here at West Coast Geeks, we're not going to give you any Pathfinder content because I'm not interested in the game. I wasn't yeah. interested in, in it before the whole OGO. And, you know, afterwards, um, I do. you can check out my uh, shorts. Not the shorts that I'm wearing right now, you pervert. Pochino, but my, my West Coast video channel shorts. And I just show like a small uh, video of my current collection right now. And I go all the way back from, you know, first edition, which is uh, Eric and I are currently doing. We're doing the player's handbook. Uh, this Friday, we'll drop the monks if all goes well with the um, video, um, with the audio. So hopefully that will be worked out. Style. Um, so, yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm not switching to Pathfinder because D&D pissed me off. Um mm-hmm. I've always enjoyed the game. Eric and Eric's like me. We love playing the game. Um, we don't care what corporate does. Corporate has no control over our game mm. and what we want well, to play. We have kind of moved on from D and D. I mean, I still play in your group, but our Sunday group, we've changed systems. What are you we guys are playing, playing now? We're playing Shadow of the Demon Lord. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, but I'm yeah, saying, but you didn't switch over to Pathfinder is my point. No, no, we didn't go to Pathfinder because, like, it's it's very cumbersome. I would, I would not want to run it. If somebody else ran it, I may try it. But right now, I'm actually I'm not even running Shadow of the Demon Lord. Martin is running that. Yeah. Um, I'm still debating on whether or not if I do come back to to D and D, it'll probably still be Fifth Edition. And I've mostly just been finishing up. I've actually. I think I finished writing up my uh, my homebrew, like my homebrew book. Nice, I have, dude. you know, quite quite a few pages done, and I'm I'm in the process of moving it away from the five E system and making it more system system neutral, I guess you could say, to where it can be adapted to any system. Yeah, to any fantasy system. So if you're playing yeah, whatever, so that's you can what just I, that's kind it. of about what I've been working on and and honestly like I said I'm I've been playing Shadow of the Demon Lord but we're not you know we play maybe once a month this kind of this kind of thing with Wizards of the Coast is kind of put a damper on our role playing yeah so we've been doing a lot more miniature gaming I'll save that for later yeah well you know yeah that that's going to be another topic actually in this video um I I think a lot of people are like with Eric like like for me and a lot of old schoolers who have just, you know, been playing for so long, we're not going anywhere. But I'm not buying their, rushing off and buying their products either. And I, I never have done that with 5th edition to yeah, begin with. There's um, been like two or three releases that I haven't bought. Yeah, I didn't. Um, I boycotted the last book that they did. The What was it? The Vault? Yeah, they've got The Vault and then they got some new one out. No, they haven't got the Big Bees yet out. No, there's two. There's two books books that are out that I know at least two that I have not gotten. Because the last one before that was Dragonlance, so I can't think of the other one. Then you're thinking that you're referring to. Um, makes me mad. 
Yeah, I can't remember the name of it. Yep. So, um, I'm not bad. I don't want to come across like I'm bad mouthing or bashing Pathfinder. I'm just saying from an old school D and D player. Um, I have so much content that um, I'm also like Eric and have also created my own little homebrew world that they played in. And, you know, if there's something I like that they're going to publish, like the, I'm looking forward to the Big B's book on Giants or whatever. And then I'm going to see what the review is. that really going to be a thing? Is that true? That is. That's coming out in a couple of months. That may be. That may be. Uh, oh, Journeys Through the Radiant Citadel. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I I yeah. Um, skipped on that one, too. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Vault and the uh, the Radiant Citadel I have not gotten. Yeah. So, um, maybe if I wasn't so invested throughout all the years, like if I, if I was just playing 5e and they did this and I'm like, yeah, you know, I've always wanted to try out Pathfinder. Now's my chance to see if I like it. But, um, you know, you're going to, everybody's going to have to find the right game for them. Mm -hmm. And I just want to remind people that, you know, that. When you buy an RPG system, it's yours. It doesn't matter what the company does or, you know, or anything, or they get bought out by another company. They do stupid things. It's your game from that point. And you can, mm -hmm. you and your friends just play. So, you know, don't feel like you need to jump over to another system. But at the same time, also, you know, give Pathfinder a try. Um, I played third edition, so... That's basically what Pathfinder is, and I know a lot of people might jump in the comments and saying, "Well, it's moved beyond that," and I'm sure it has, but you know. Yeah, I'm sure there's some changes made in Second Edition. Uh, I heard that they made it a lot less cumbersome. Apparently, Pathfinder was supposed to be super cum cumbersome. And yeah, it was like it was really crunchy, like Third Edition. Yeah. So I'm glad I didn't play much of that. Yeah, I thought I I did enjoy Third Edition in the sense of. This is when they really committed to grids. Mm, so, yeah, it was very, very miniature based. Yeah, so that's what I, I really, what I really enjoyed about third edition. All right, moving on, next topic. All right, Magic: The Gathering. How much is too much? Like D and D fans, what is your breaking point before you quit the game? Are you getting bored of the grind on Arena? At what price do you think magic anniversary prices should have been? So, um, so Eric, uh, how often do you play <laughs> Magic the Gathering, the card game? I do not anymore. I have deleted when I all this shit went down with the D and D. Yeah, I unsubscribed to any Wizards of the Coast MTG shit. I deleted Arena from my phone. I deleted Arena from my tablet. I I'm in the process of selling. I have, well, like you know, I I did a bunch of playtesting for Magic: The Gathering when it first came out. Its initial releases, I had you know almost a complete set of alpha cards, and I just I have tons of cards going back thirty years. I'm in the process. Of, I'm even selling them off. I'm yeah, like, you should talk to Calvin. See if he wants any of those. I'm selling them to stores that get that offer a lot of money. There's there's I I have a friend of mine that just sold three of the old I forget what they were the Tonos' card I think they were Tonos cards like three of the cards for like fourteen grand. Damn. Could yeah, power like nine. We, we have a no. This was actually a store in Utah. Like we're we're not even dealing locally. I mean, some some like I'm gonna bring some of my stuff to to the locals. I actually I did bring mine to one of the local stores and they were like. This is a big collection. It, they wouldn't even appraise it without making like thing that I had to sell it to them if they were going to pray. I'm like, I don't know what you guys are off me. Yeah. And the guy was like, you'd be best off just selling it, you know, a few cards at a time, getting money, you know. We what have you to do. sell it to you if we appraise yeah. it. Like, what dude, the I, hell, dude? dude? It sounds like canon. Dude, you don't understand. I had thousands and thousands of cards. I kind of get it to where if they were going to take the time and, you know, I had thousands of cards and they're going to appraise them all. They would kind of want, you know, but I was like, can you give me a ballpark? I mean, yeah, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to be beholden the selling to, cause I know what I had. 
you know, so I'm just, I've been selling off cards here and there to buy armies and, yep. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the process of liquidating all of my magic, the gathering. Uh, I keep, I keep a few cards that like, I know not sentimental value, but like really old cards that I like force of nature, Gaia's liege, uh, aspect of the wolf, like all those old yeah, anything alpha that you like, you might be attached to the artwork. Yeah. The artwork like I've kept, i yeah, I've kept the Sarah Angel with me for thirty years. Yeah, food. Black Order Alpha Sarah Angel. No, I, like you know, I get that, man. Yeah, I've sold off my. Oh, yeah, but I'm I'm finally starting to get rid of them all. I sold off my Magic collection twice, and um, I'm not getting back into the game. Uh, before the pandemic, I was already selling off selling Magic on on eBay and stuff like that, and so. Yeah, I bought a shit ton of Forgotten Realms, though, when it came out, because it was D&D. &D. Yeah, no. I was, like, I was thinking yeah. about buying a box just to have a box of it, but now even that, I'm like, I don't even give a damn. Um, Dude, I bought, I bought five boxes of Forgotten Realms, set, set draft boosters. Nice. Bought five of those, and then I was talking with Calvin, and we were kind of getting into it. I bought a couple of Midnight, uh, mid, was it? Uh, midnight Crimson Vow and Midnight Hunt. Yeah. I bought a bunch of those. And I'm just like, you know what? Those are kind of current. I might as well buy. Uh, I had a bunch of like um, meat hook massacres, that were, and I was like, whatever. I gave one to Calvin. And I was like, here, happy birthday. It was on his birthday. I was like, here, you run this in your deck. Yep. But yeah, I was just, yeah, I'm getting rid of all those. Yeah. Just you know, I think I a lot they of really put a bad bad taste in my mouth, and it's been you know four months since then, and it hasn't gone away. So, and you know what? Honestly. I haven't missed it. I mean, I I played most ninety nine percent of what I did was playing on Arena anyway. Yeah, and I haven't missed it. I haven't reinstalled it. So I'm like, you know what? These cards just sit here. I've been dragging a lot of these Magic cards with me around now for twenty five years plus. Time to you know get rid of it and uh, start focusing, uh, putting it towards my other hobby. Yeah, no, I hear you on that. You like, um, <laughs> I I've stopped doing like arena videos, and I used to do those like two or three yeah. times a week. Yeah, I used to do a lot, and I'm just like, I'm just bored with it now. I'm bored with the game. Yeah. I'm bored with this constant grind that I have to do to try to keep up with enough rares and mythics to keep up with the popular yeah, deck so I can make a video. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. I got other things I want to do with my time now, and. You got no time for that. Well, it's not, yeah, but that's, but that's me, you know. There's a lot of people who enjoy that, and, you know, that's cool, you know. I mean, I still love the game, and if anybody were to give me a commander deck and be like, hey, join, join, join us, you know, like one of my friends, like Eric, or if I was up in mm. Seattle and stuff, I'd still play. I'm just like, I don't know, I'm just kind of like moving on. Like, I'm, I'm, in, I'm back in Dungeons and Dragons, and I'm really enjoying making these videos that we're making, especially talking about like, first edition and stuff and um i'm gonna be getting back into warhammer which we'll be talking about in a moment and so um yeah no i, I you know it, it just gets to the point where these hobbies take up a lot of your time so if you have if you're into too many of these like i am and eric was yeah. you know like D D &D, tabletops magic the gathering dude you can't con and for me comic books dude uh, yeah, yeah, man, dude, I'm. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, no, I've cut it down to to role playing and and miniature gaming right now, yeah. and even like miniature gaming. I'm I'm, you know, I've been messing around with half a dozen different systems right now, so it's I need to focus that down too. Yep, and so what started off this hatred of Hasbro and <laughs> Wizards of the Coast was the Magic Anniversary price. They were selling four packs. For a thousand dollars, which then broke down to like the equivalent of two fifty a pack, and this is what I think pissed off the community the most. It was already crazy that you wanted two fifty a pack. You had to buy four. Had to yeah. buy four. You weren't just gonna sell yeah, them one trash, one pack dude. at a time, and it you know some people were trying to act like uh. More people were upset because they were reprinting the reserve list. Like well, that's not what why people got upset. People got upset. Well, I think that was part of it. They, they were charging so much for copies of the reserves. Yeah. So, 
you know, that old. you could that weren't even tournament legal. Like you couldn't even yeah. play this in a command tournament. So that's what the other thing too. On top of that, you want all this money? It's not even tournament legal. Like for commander, Just get the hell yeah. out of here. The Watsi is trash. Yeah. So this is what started it. Mm. This is what started this, and we're gonna get into the uh, the OGL in a moment. But um, if they wouldn't have got so greedy and just would have been like, look, you can buy. As many packs as you want, but they're going to be $100. People would have gone crazy for that. And they would have mm-hmm. hit their target number, and people would have spent close to anywhere between 500 and and 1000 per order anyways. Now, now, let me ask you something. Did they meet their target numbers when they put these out initially? No, Didn't they, dude, sell out? They, they tanked so hard. Really? They didn't sell out? No. I'm close. Uh, They'd, we'll never get the actual numbers on what was printed and all that. Oh but, well, yeah. Um, let some let, let some company whistleblower comes in and gives us actual data, but right, I haven't heard anything about that. So you know, um, this all started in 2022, and we're in 2023, and we're still facing all this backlash. Let's move on to the next. Oh, Games Workshop. No shit. With rising prices, when is enough enough? You no, know, it's like you yeah. want to get into this hobby and it's going to cost you a freaking arm and a leg. Hundreds Trust me, dollars. I'm getting back in. No, not hundreds, thousands of dollars. Well, you're also running fucking orcs, so you sh- you should know better. <laughs> I mean, you, you, at a you bare know minimum, better. you're going to spend 500 to 1000 uh, and the reason no, why I chose I fantasy, and then the next one is, is miniature figure tabletop war gaming dying? And lastly, oh. is the game worth the expenses? So, um, yes. <laughs> Eric, is the yes. game dying? No, it is, it is increasing. It is ever increasing in popularity because even if you're talking about miniature figure, miniature war gaming, Tabletop war gaming in general. In general. It is growing more than ever before. But I think you that know, has something to do aside. with uh, people being able to 3D print their own models. Yes, because you have rule sets that are out there. You yeah. can play, you know, Age of Sigmar and print your entire armies. Yeah. You know, I know I know people that have that have printed, you know, they don't want to go out and then spend two hundred dollars for a gargant. So they print one at home, use yeah. them on the table. They're really the only time you can't use them. And I, actually, even that is is getting kind of more lax are in tournaments like, you know, LVO and stuff like that. But I've seen people use use printed stuff in LVO. You no, know, I've used printed uh, like accessories in LVO. Nobody knows. They don't go around like, you know, people that run tournaments and that aren't real unless it's super obvious. Yeah. But even then, I mean, I don't, you know, it's still kind of that iffy gray area. Yeah. Because J- Games Workshops, they they don't, they're not running it. You know, they stopped doing that when they stopped their uh, GTs. But oh, I, they, I did not they, see, see. I've been out of the game for a long time, people. So that's why oh, I really yeah. wanted to have Eric here. Um, because Games Workshop running stopped running GTs years and years ago. I think they just started picking them up maybe last year. Yeah, and started doing them again. But yeah, they had they didn't do anything. That's that's how you know companies and and don't you know this is I don't know much about Frontline. I know some of the people that work there, and I've I've dealt with them because I've run events at their tournaments and that. Yeah. But you know that's where really they kind of picked up the slack when GW kind of stepped away from running tournaments. They kind of picked that up and and you know kind of kept it going. So those guys have really, they've really kept the, the tournament scene, especially for 40K and, you know, and, and Age of Sigmar now too, but especially for 40K, they really kind of stepped up and and took over and led the way in, in promoting tournament play again for, for, well, not again, but continued gameplay for, for 40K and stuff like that. Because GW was just like, it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, I don't know if it wasn't financially viable for them. They were moving away from that kind of stuff. But, yeah. you know, yeah, Frontline Gaming and companies like that, they they really they really kept it going. So, you know, that's why we have the 
tournaments and stuff that we have today. All right, so of those guys. if you guys have um, been enjoying the content so far and you look through my playlist, you see the other things that you want to look at. Hey, it's my birthday. Subscribe. Help me get up to uh, 250 by the t end of this month would make my day. Um, our goal is to make it up to 1,000 by the end of the year. So that'd be cool. But um, either way, Eric and I enjoy talking about these. We love it when people leave comments below. I always read out the comments to Eric and let him know what people are saying. So... Um, like I said, I'm not really current on the um, tabletop or gaming, you know, mm -hmm. uh, current of events. That's why Eric is here to keep me on so, tab. Yeah. But I'm going to start getting back into the flow of things. My goal are is we next doing, year. Are we still uh, next year, I'm going to, to w w whatever the Vegas is. Tell me once the tickets go up so I can get my ticket. They go up uh, usually the... The, the week right after Memorial Day, so the end of next month. You better be ready. All right, yeah, and I gotta get my go boy fast. Greg and see if he'll be if he wants to fly down from Seattle. Those, and we those can meet tickets up there. go fast, man. Oh yeah, dude. So that's my um, goal. Okay, right. LVO, Age of Sigmar, Age of Sigmar. But I don't know. I might yeah. want to play uh, uh, um, Lord of the Rings. I don't. I don't get know. Get this shit out of here. You better focus, son. <laughs> Can't be can't be fucking around. You know those are armies to paint. You gotta have stuff fully painted, son. Yeah, I know. I you can't know. be like, oh, I'm changed my mind six months out. You know how long it takes to paint a fully painted army. I know. I'm gonna be doing videos on that, and we're actually gonna Especially be talking about the painters. Armies? I I got the paint set in for oh, uh, nice. Age of Sigmar, which is a pretty nice paint set. And we're gonna we're gonna do an opening and a review, and um, I'm gonna give some personal tips. On the brushes, because I already had a problem with the brush I received. All right, but, oh, was it a GW brush? Yeah, so we're, hey, we're going to put a pin in that. We got another video to do tonight. We got to get the monks out. All right, so moving on. <laughs> All right, the wrap-up. And uh, for those of you who have quit D&D, will you ever come back? And are you looking forward, forward to D&D Online? They are no longer calling it 1D&D. They will yeah, no I'm longer call it calling it... I'm going to keep calling it that just to remind them of their folly. You know, um, they're saying they're just going to change it to uh, 5.5. They're still calling it 5th yeah. edition. Bullshit. Um, I was like, Bitter. just call it 6. You're making these changes. Just call it 6. Yeah. You know, but you either way. Half half elves. Um, Eric has already stated what his group is currently going through, but, you know. I mean, I could see us coming back to D and D. Like, yeah. if I start running again, I would probably run five E. I, I really, because I've even talked about, you know, trying fantasy war, uh, Warhammer fantasy role play. Cubicle Seven has redone a uh, redone that, and it's actually pretty good. But I know some players don't like the system, so I'm kind of like, eh, I don't, you know, I kind of want to run something that everybody's familiar with. The problem with with five E is just players are just too powerful, man. I mean, yeah. in the end, the 5e has advanced so far that the the distance between how player characters have progressed and monsters have progressed, there's the gap is just maddening. I mean, you your your player characters are so fucking powerful now. Well, they even talked about that. They're like, yeah, we're yeah. gonna make and adjustments. You know, when yeah, they go to D and D online, they they're gonna be making some achieve. serious adjustments. And yeah. we're going to talk about that. That's going to be another pin in, in there. Um, we, like I said, we have a s ongoing series with the history of Dungeons and Dragons. We, um, we started off with the uh, Monster Manual. We're currently doing the Player's Handbook. And then by the end of the year, we're also going to have the original six modules for the Super Campaign reviewed. Mm -hmm. um, Eric, you haven't, you've never played through any of those, have you? I don't believe so, no. No, not against, the, not against the Giants, not, not going into no. the Drow? No. Okay, no. so when I, I do these videos with Eric, it's going to be a general review. And then I'm going to break it down as the uh, DM to give tips. And those are the videos I won't be doing with Eric because I do want him to play through this series. You know what, maybe that should be our next adventure. And I could kind of... As we progress through it, I could give my my input in the videos. 
Well, you guys already agreed on a Vernish show. Or de- yeah, uh, but you know. Eh. <laughs> a Vernish, Smyrnish. A Vernish, yeah. I'm sure we'll get to hell one way or another. Yep. So, um,. We're currently doing Ravenloft, so Eric and I are going to be discussing that. Um, even though we're in the middle of the play, we're going to be talking about the beginning. And I'm going to be giving you like DM's notes, and Eric will be uh, part of that because he experienced it and as a player. And we're going to be talking about That's different right. options and things that, you, that I have personally added my own touch to the game. So yes. with that, man, this is the birthday show. I want to thank all of my uh, friends who have supported both my YouTube channels and have watched. And I want to thank you, all the um, people who have watched this video, if you made it this far. Uh, thank you very much. Um, as you can tell, Eric and I both enjoy geek culture. Always have, always will. Yep. Right, final thoughts, Eric? Um... I'm looking forward to LVO, sucker. Yep, so am I. All right. I've, been, I've even been playing more Age of Sigmar. I played last week, and I'll probably play this weekend, too. There you go, people. And with that, we'll catch you later.